Hello, Oscillator Sync here. The Electron Digitact is a wonderfully deep but focused sampler, sequencer, groove box thing, and it's already become one of the favorite items in my collection. But what if I was to tell you that it could also be used as a ridiculously over the top mono synth? You might say that that's the rantings of a madman. But let me ask you a question. What's well, got two thumbs and eight tracks that can be configured to act as oscillators? This guy. Okay, let's just quickly talk about the hardware setup. Um, so uh, just really briefly, I've got my key step, which is plugged in via MIDI into the MIDI in of the Digitact. That's basically it. Uh, the key step is set to channel one and I'm down, I think, two octaves on it because that's the uh, range over which you get the most uh, playable notes on the Digitact. I'll keep this out of shot for the rest of the video because you don't need to see it. It's a uh, key step. They're useful and great if you don't have one. Uh, they're really useful. There we go. Let's get to the main event. Okay, in order to make this work, what we need is for whenever I press a key on the key step, it uh, triggers all of the different voices all at once. So at the moment, if I hit a key, it's triggering that uh, kick drum sample there. Uh, but only this one, you can see it's just lighting up. So what we want to do is make sure that everything's been fired off all at once. And we can do that by going into the settings menu, into MIDI config and into channels. And here you've got the channels that each of the tracks is going to respond to. So at the moment they're set sequentially, one, two, three, four, blah, blah, blah. But we just want to set all of these to one. And once we've done that, like that, and we come out of this menu, when I hit a key on the key step, we get that massive cacophony there. Which, you know, might be useful in some musical contexts, who knows. So in order to make our oscillators, we're gonna make use of a lot of single cycle waveforms. So let's load those into RAM so we can make use of them. So we go into the settings and into samples, and just here in the factory, um, obviously if you have other single cycle waveforms, you can make use of them. I'm just gonna use the ones in the factory. If we go into the toolbox folder and into oscillators, we've got a bunch of single cycle waveforms. Uh, I might just load them all. Should we do that? Yeah, let's just load all of these in. Um, yes, 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 yes. I want all of these. It's probably a shortcut for this. I don't know what it is. Uh, so almost at the bottom. Yes, okay, so let's uh, load all of those into our project. 72 of them, why not? They're only very, very tiny because there is only one cycle of the waveform there. So one other little bit of housekeeping, if you like, before we get into the real meat of what we're doing. Uh, at the moment, if I play something on the key step, you'll see that all of these are lighting up. So that means that all of them are playing all at once. Uh, now, unfortunately, uh, muting the ones that we don't want to hear uh, doesn't work because it actually uh, the mutes on the dig attack are muting the uh, sequence and not the actual sound. So they're all still playing all together. So in order to make it so that we can kind of work on them individually, we need to uh, change their uh, output volume, which we can either do um, up here on the main volume here, or if we want to sort of get a view of all of them at once, if we go into the master page, uh, page two of the master here, we can turn down all of them that we don't want to hear like that. And wonderful. Now, although they're all lighting up, we are only hearing this first one here. The other little thing that I would say is that as we start to stack all of these things, we do run the risk of actually overloading the internal um, mixer. Uh, although it's digital, it will overload eventually. So I'm also going to just bring the track level down to maybe half-ish. And now we can get going. So what we're going to do in essence is treat each of the eight sampler tracks as an oscillator. So um, here's the first one and you can hear this just sort of clicking away and the reason it's clicking away is that the waveform that's currently in there is very very short. Um, it's a single cycle of the sound that we want to represent so it's going through that um, that waveform, it's getting to the end and it's stopping dead which is creating this click. In order to get a uh, an oscillator sound all we really need to do is change our play mode to one of the looping modes and there we have a uh, an oscillator which sounds like that quite pleasant um, 
Let's just reduce the uh, decay here so it's sort of an auto on, auto off kind of thing. Lovely, and we can play that there. So um, I thought to begin with, what we'll try and do is sort of replicate that classic three uh, voice, three oscillator uh, monosynth sound with uh, three uh, similar oscillators, which are all slightly detuned, uh, beating off each other to make them sound big. So I figure we may as well go for the classic starting point, which would be a, a sawtooth wave. So let's go down here. We should have a saw just there. Yep. Classic. Uh, let's filter that a little bit. Maybe give it a little bit of resonance and maybe also give it a bit of envelope movement as well. Maybe a bit of a faster decay there. A bit darker to end with. A bit longer decay, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Nice. Um, and that's kind of our, our starting point for that. So I want to make a three voice version of this. So uh, if I hold track and hit record for copy, that will copy the sound for this track, not the sequence, but the sound itself. And what I'll do is I'm going to go to the next two, uh, like this, and I'm going to track and paste the next one and track and paste. So now I have three, um, three of my tracks all doing that same thing. We also need to make sure we go here and turn up those voices as well. Around there that'll do, and around there that'll do. So now if I play, all I've got is the same sound but louder, and that's because I'm playing exactly the same sound on all of these tracks and they're all identical. So the first thing we can do to try and get a bit more uh, movement there is on each of these two uh, copy tracks is just to change the tuning ever so slightly, maybe just a few cents, maybe 10 cents, something like that, not much, uh, in either direction, so one up and one down. Immediately bigger, cooler. Um, the next thing we can do, uh, which you can't necessarily do on a traditional monosynth, is let's actually pan the two slightly detuned versions uh, left and right just a tiny bit just to make things a little bit wider, which should sound pretty cool. Don't want to be so precise. Yeah! Immediately, there's just something that's a little bit, a little bit cooler about that. Uh, let's let's maybe overdrive um, these oscillators as well, just to get them a bit meaner. Just want to hear a bit of fluff. No way happening. Let's just compensate that. The same on these ones, just it's interesting because they sound quite out of tune when you, but together they sound really cool. Nice. Uh, everything's going to be in C minor, by the way. Uh, obviously, everything's going to be in C minor. It's always in C minor. Right. Uh, so, um, at the moment, it's cool sounding, but everything's quite sort of static still. So, one thing we can do is try and introduce that thing that we fetishize in analog synths, which is that the oscillators don't ever stay in tune, by introducing some drift to each of these. Uh, so, if we go into the LFO page, uh, I'm going to set the speed quite slow. We'll fine tune that as we go along. I'm going to go and set the destination to tune and just like maybe another another 10% each way. We can start to hear that the beating is slightly different. So if we take uh, the LFO button and we hold that down and copy, that allows us to copy that LFO page to each of the other um, pages and what we'll do is we will um, just alter the speed a little bit on each of them so that they're kind of all moving at a slightly different um, speed uh, which means the beating won't be constant either I 
I feel like now we've got that movement, we can actually probably um, afford just to make them ever so slightly more detuned. Not by much. It's it's amazing how how little will make it sound out of tune, but. Kind of getting that super sore kind of sound. Nice. Okay. So there's our sort of three voice thing happening. Pretty cool. Let's move on to the next track because we want a sub oscillator. So um, there are some that are called sub. Perhaps we should try those. Uh, an acid sub sounds uh, sounds good, doesn't it? Let's make sure we actually turn this track up as well. Oh, I make sure we're also looping, otherwise we're hearing anything. Well, that's uh, move that to K. Not sure about that sample. Let's try a different one. Oh, that's cool. Bit of sort of hollow sounding. Try a bit of overdrive. Uh, upper harmonic there. What if we also get that filter moving just to give that a little extra sun sun? It's too fast. Nice. Uh, next one, let's have a, a, a super oscillator, so something that's pitched uh, above. So let's make sure we have this turned up. Make sure our um, play mode is set to loop. And let's find something maybe like um, maybe one of these FM sounds, perhaps. Yeah, that might work. Let's uh, set the decay to, oops, set the decay to zero there. tune up. And perhaps we can high pass this because we don't need all that bottom end there. Let's probably come down a little bit. Let's get some modulation on there. Um, one thing that I'm wondering whether like a faster... That's kind of cool. And the other thing I was wondering about was maybe having it uh, pan about a bit. I like the panning. Cool. Uh, okay, next one along. I, I reckon we need some noise into this to give it a little bit of fizz. So um, we've got some noise samples actually sneakily off camera brought in. Uh, where is it? Down at the bottom. This noise sample here. 
Uh, turn that up. Get that looping. Get that decay down. Oh, that's interesting. Because, of course, it's repitching this noise. It is still a sample. We are getting a pitched element, so let's um, tune this in. Seems like a good candidate to have that filter moving in and out, I think. Slowly. It's a sound good one we had. A little bit of envelope. That's not good when we've got some uh, a little bit too much envelope. Nice. And we had a bit of reverb to that. That'll sound kind of cool. We still got two more tracks to go, two more voices to go. Uh, so one of the things I thought would be cool is to kind of fake a sort of cross-fading uh, wavetable thing by having uh, these two voices uh, cross-fade volume wise between two different waveforms so let's take a look at how we can do that let's uh, turn these tracks up and this one okay so let's pick the first thing we want to crossfade between that's quite cool yeah that'll do for the first one and uh, loop this one Just to change this one by accident. Well, let's try those two. Okay, so the way we're going to crossfade these, um, also we'll just drop the decay time down like we have for the other ones. The way we're going to crossfade these is by using an LFO uh, going to the um, amplitude. So to make this work, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have got the LFO set to start fresh uh, every single time. So on this mode here, we're setting this to trigger rather than free. I'm going to make it slow to begin with. Uh, and then we're going to send our destination to the uh, volume there. And then, oh, can't operate this machine, apparently. I'm going to set it to the volume. And then we are going to set the depth to full. And you can hear that that's now fading in and out. Now, if we take this LFO page, which we can do hold down LFO, copy, and go over to the other voice here, LFO and paste, and we play them together, they're just going to fade in and out together. Which is not what we want, we want them to cross fade. And the way that we'll do that is by setting the uh, start phase of the waveform to halfway here. So what this means is that rather than starting, uh, I don't know where it's starting, whether it's starting at the top or at the bottom, it's now going to start at the bottom halfway through the waveform. So if we play these together... We now get this cross-fading thing happening. So let's take check that in, in context. And you've got this tonal sweep, but it's not, a, it's not a filter, it's something else. We could also try maybe just slightly detuning these. That might be, again, quite fun to do. Let's see if that makes things sound a bit bigger. I like this noise, I can't, but I want to hear it a bit more so we can turn that up on the track here. like that noise. It's adding something cool. Perhaps 
Plus, we can also pan these left and right uh, just a tiny bit, not much, uh, just enough to give it a uh, slight movement across the stereo field. Okay, I think our, our main sounds here can also be a little bit louder. Hopefully we won't start running into clipping issues. I think probably this sub can be a bit loud as well. In fact, let's, let's try tuning the sub down an octave as well. See if that sounds more evil. That's what we're looking for with the sub oscillator. Now, of course, what we need to do now is add some reverb and delay because everything sounds better when you do that. Um, so I'm just going to um, use the control all feature here. So I'm going to hold down track here, which means that anything I adjust now will adjust for everything. And I want to put, let's not mess around. Let's just put loads of reverb on there. And we'll go into the reverb page so we can fine tune fine tune the reverb. Now that is a short reverb. That's not what we want. We want Massive lingering reverb. Immediately everything sounds better. Just gonna make it a little bit darker. I think these ones are too too bright, so let's just filter those a little bit. Needs to fade in a bit slower. There we go. And just not as much as well. Uh, sorry, uh, let's add some delay for sure. Again, so track for control all. Smack that up halfway, maybe. Uh, go into the delay. Make sure that's on ping pong because it should always be on ping pong. Nice and wide. Slightly darker. sound too much like repeating exactly the same thing. A bit more feedback. Maybe you put some of that delay back into the reverb as well. Some people would say that's too much delay reverb, but I would disagree. <laughs> that is quite a lot of delay reverb though. <laughs> no, that that is quite a lot of delay reverb. That's maybe too much. Is that ever gonna end? <laughs> nice. Let's force it to end. Now, some people might say that to use the Digitact A, a uh, great sequencer, um, sampler, beat machine, groove box to uh, create a single mono voice is probably a slightly silly thing to do. And I would agree with them. Yes, it is. But I thought that it was an interesting uh, thing that we can do because once you've created these massively stacked voices, we can, of course, sample them and load them back in as samples to use in our compositions. So there was a serious point to this. And if the dig attack is the only real 
synth that you own, then you really can build huge, huge sounds with it uh, that actually really you couldn't easily do on, on any other um any other synthesizer because not many other synthesizers have eight voices that are so hugely configurable available to you. Um, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this slightly silly but hopefully entertaining video. Um, if you did, make sure you hit that like button and also if you're not already subscribed, then do subscribe to the channel. There'll be lots of uh, Dig Attacked uh, stuff coming up soon. If you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, I don't currently have a Patreon or anything, but I did release uh, an EP of ambient music at the end of last year. I will put a link to it in the description of this video. It is free to download, but it's sort of pay what you want. So if you want to chuck a couple quid my way, then that's one a way to do it. I would very much appreciate it. And of course, any money that I make on the channel will of course go back into buying gear because I'm an addict and I need to maintain this habit. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me once again. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye. That, that, that really is too much delay and refurb.